So we're making our pacifist wizard, which is a transmuter and a stout halfling. Uh, we've already covered levels one through four. If you haven't seen that part of the video, you can click the link. It's in the video description or the comment section down below. For now, let's look at increasing this character to level five. Now level five is a big level for wizards because third level spells are a dramatic increase in power from previous levels. Now this character only has one more spell preparation, so what I wanna do here is take one spell to prepare and one spell to be used as a ritual. So I'm gonna grab Liaman's Tiny Hut right away, uh, and that'll be my ritual spell for this level. And then the second one I'm gonna take is Hypnotic Pattern. And Hypnotic Pattern is potentially the best third level spell in the game uh, because it incapacitates a large number of enemies and they don't get a second saving throw. It, you just have to maintain your concentration and there's nothing else we're going to be concentrating on. This is going to be by far the best spell we've got in our spell book at this level. Another great thing about a hypnotic pattern is it's going to remain effective as we go up in levels. So the preparation is easy. We're just going to add hypnotic pattern at this level. We don't need to prepare Lehman's Tiny Hut, which is going to give us safe long rests. Uh, but our big gun in combat is definitely Hypnotic Pattern. In the most important combats, that's the spell you want to use. That said, we're keeping our web prepared, and I would be then using it for the slightly less important combats. In both the cases of Hypnotic Pattern and web, uh, if you have a chaotic melee where the enemies and the allies are all mixed together, neither of them are going to be easy to place, and that's when you want to look at spells like Levitate. But once you've got Hypnotic Pattern and you're concentrating on Hypnotic Pattern, go ahead and just do the help action with your actions uh, because once Hypnotic Pattern is in place, you've given your allies the tactical advantage they need to win the combat. Now at level 6, we're going to get our first major ability with the Transmuter. So we get the Transmuter Stone, and the Transmuter Stone is a really good ability. Uh, it requires eight hours to create, but it's permanent once it's created. Uh, and then you can have it do one of several things. You can have it provide you dark vision with a range of 60 feet. You can do an increased speed of 10 feet. You can do proficiency in constitution saving throws. You can do resistance to all different kinds of damage. And then every time you cast a Transmutation spell, you can then switch the effect to something else. But to be honest, most of the time, at, certainly at this level, I'm going to be keeping it on my constitution saves. And I'm going to keep it for myself. And that way, when I do things like hypnotic pattern or web, then I can be definitely sure that I'll be able to maintain that concentration. Uh, and there's far less likelihood that I'm going to need to use Lucky. And remember, Lucky is flexible. Uh, so when you get attacked, when you're concentrating and you make your concentration save, uh, between this and the halfling Lucky ability, my chance of making that concentration save is going to be reasonably good. Remember, we have a starting 16 constitution as well. Uh, but in those cases where I fail, then I can use the lucky resource for another roll. Now, that doesn't mean I'm never going to use these other abilities. They are reasonably good. I mean, dark vision is reasonably good. Move, a speed increase is always nice to have. And resistance can be useful as well. But all of those would be things I would use only if I knew they were going to be particularly useful in what I'm coming up against. Uh, but most of the time, I'm going to leave it on constitution saves. Now, if you have another character in the party that really takes advantage of a good concentration save, maybe it's a cleric who's using uh, spirit guardians and they're losing their concentration, you can also give them the transmuter stone to give them the bonus. And then maybe you can use your action to be doing things like hiding or dodging uh, in order to maintain your own concentration. Uh, but that really depends on how the makeup of the rest of your party looks. So we're going to get two more spells, one more prep. Uh, lots of good ritual spells at third level. I do think Lehman's Tiny Hut is far and away the best of them, uh, but there are other ones that are good as well. Uh, and the one I want to take here, I think, is Phantom Steed. Uh, now, Phantom Steed, it is a ritual that is going to give you a steed that moves very fast. We're talking about a 100-foot movement, so you can then use your Phantom Steed, move up to 100 feet. It's going to give you a vastly improved maneuverability in combat. And remember, as a halfling, we only have a 25-foot base movement speed. So increasing that to 100 feet is a big advantage. You can also do things, you would assume that you're going to have this as a controlled mount. Uh, that means that you can have it do things like do the disengage action in addition to moving 100 feet on its turn. That will give you free movement on the battlefield. You could even go next to enemies and they won't get attacks of opportunity against you because you're not moving under your own power. 
you can also create a phantom steed for somebody else to ride. So a really good ritual for this character, I think. Uh, you could also consider things like water breathing, another really good ritual. But I do think phantom steed is really good for a halfling because of their slower movement rate. And then the spell I'm going to prepare, uh, it shouldn't be a surprise, I'm going to take counterspell. Uh, I think a wizard should pretty much always take counterspell at some point because it's one of those advantages that wizards and sorcerers get over other kinds of spellcasters. So when we get into preparations, we're just going to prepare counterspell. Easy. So our tactics don't change much, but just keep in mind that if you are concentrating on a spell, it's now going to be more difficult for enemies to break your concentration. And if you want to do things like deliver the help action to an ally, that will be easier to do as well, because you can move in close to an enemy, you can then move away from that enemy without provoking attacks of opportunity and still put a decent distance between you and the rest of the fight by using your Phantom Steed. So let's take this build to 7th level. This is going to grant us our 4th level spells. Now we are going to get two 4th level spells. We're only going to be able to prepare one of them. And the one that I'm going to take that I'm going to prepare right off the bat is Polymorph. Uh, again, Polymorph doesn't do hit points damage, so this is definitely a spell that this character would use. Uh, we can either transform one of our allies into something beneficial, or we can transform one of our enemies into something that's not beneficial. Uh, now, usually when I use Polymorph, I'm using it on an ally. So an ally is low on hit points, and then you turn them into a giant ape or a T-Rex or something like that, where they can be effective in combat again and they have a ton of hit points so that if enemies hit them uh, then they're not doing damage to allies and then once the polymorph is over and then all that hit point damage doesn't really count for anything. The other spell I'm going to take is Watery Sphere. I'm not going to prepare it yet but this is a great battlefield control spell, great kind of spell for somebody who doesn't do damage in combat. So it's something I will be preparing soon but I just can't afford to prepare it yet. And that's not really a problem because we're going to have no problem using our fourth level slot on the polymorph. So as this character moves up in levels, as we hit 7th level, we're at the point now where the not doing damage is going to be less and less of an issue. At first level, when you've used your big gun spells, you have to think creatively, what am I going to do besides attacking? Uh, but at 7th level, we're having enough spells now that most of the time we're going to be spell casting now. Uh, and so those times when we are looking for a cantrip or the help action, they're going to be less common than they were before. They'll still occur. Uh, we cast a big gun spell, we're concentrating on it. We can't cast another concentration spell, so now we're looking for other things to do. So I could still totally see with this character doing things like the help action, or doing things like minor illusion uh, to affect the combat. But usually that would be after you've already done something big to affect the combat in a significant way. Now 8th level didn't come soon enough because those preparation slots are really tight. Uh, so getting that additional preparation slot from increasing our intelligence is going to be big here. Also remember it's going to help our spell DCs and a lot of our spells do require saving throws. So that boost to intelligence brings us up to an intelligence of 16. Uh, so then when we go into our spells we're going to choose two more 4th level spells. Now the first spell I'm going to take is Arcane Eye. This is a spell that requires preparation, but I'm not normally going to prepare it. I'm going to prepare Arcane Eye in the times where I know I'm going to need it. It's going to be useful for things like scouting out enemy encampments, or a, a town that we're not certain we're safe in, or a dungeon that we're about to crawl into. Uh, so Arcane Eye has a lot of implications, but we can often know we're going to need it before we are going to use it. So I'm not going to prepare it but instead I'll have it available and I can prepare it if I know I need it. The other spell I'm going to take is Dimension Door. Again, this isn't a spell I'm going to prepare right now. I do have Misty Step, but Dimension Door, once I get into higher levels and I get a spell like Contingency, I'm going to be glad to have Dimension Door on my list. So actually what I'm going to do with preparations is I'm going to prepare some of those spells that I wanted to prepare earlier that I couldn't. Uh, Watery Sphere is going to be the first. And the second is I'm going to go all the way back to first level and get my Absorb Elements prepared. So our effectiveness with spells actually goes up a fair bit because we've prepared more spells now. Now we have our defenses all shored up with Absorb Elements on the list as well. Uh, and we have more spell slots to use, which means we're going to have to fall back on doing things other than spells less often. Watery Sphere also gives us a nice 
alternative to polymorph in combat. Watery Sphere creates a 10 foot diameter sphere that you can move around the combat and as it hits enemies they have to make saving throws or they get caught up in the sphere they become restrained you can move them around as a battlefield control it's a very strong spell uh, and it's going to give us a nice alternative when we don't need polymorph because our allies are looking fine uh, watery sphere is a great way right off the bat to control a battlefield and it's going to be a little more discerning than something like a hypnotic pattern that covers a bigger area so ninth level moves us into our fifth level spells. Again, here we want one spell that is not going to require preparation. Uh, so I'm going to grab Rary's Telepathic Bond right now. And the other spell I'm going to take is Wall of Force. And you're going to say, but you always take Wall of Force. And I'll say, exactly. Because Wall of Force doesn't do any damage, just wins fights, doesn't provide a saving throw. Uh, and with this character, of course I'm going to take Wall of Force. What you probably see is that our spell selection actually doesn't change that much. The best wizard spells tend not to do damage, uh, so it is not hard to make a pacifist wizard. You can go into your spell selections. The spells you would probably take with the wizard anyway are often going to be the spells that don't do damage. So if you weren't already the most powerful member of the party, you probably are now. Wall of Force is huge. Uh, if you have a big enemy and a bunch of smaller enemies, you trap that big enemy, you take out the smaller enemies, and now the big enemy doesn't have those minions anymore to use for tactical advantage, and they tend to be pretty easy to clean up. But we have lots of other big gun spells that are still really good at this level. Polymorph is still really good at this level. Watery Sphere is a great battlefield control. Hypnotic Pattern is a great way to incapacitate a bunch of enemies. Even Web is still an effective spell at this level as a battlefield control. So in pretty much every combat, we're going to be able to do a big gun spell uh, because we have enough levels now, we have enough spells now. Uh, and then once that big gun spell is done, that's when we need to find other things to do. So level 10 brings us into our next transmuter ability. This one, I'm not huge on. At 10th level, you add the Polymorph spell to your spellbook if it's not there already. We are a transmuter and we're a wizard. Obviously, we're going to be having Polymorph in our spellbook already. If you don't have Polymorphs in your spellbook already, this isn't a great time to add it because Polymorph is becoming less effective as we move up in levels. So that's a bit of a disappointment. You can cast Polymorph without expending a spell slot. When you do so, you can target only yourself and transform into a beast whose challenge rating is one or lower. Once you cast Polymorph in this way, you can't do so again until you finish a short or long rest, though you can still cast it normally using an available spell slot. Now, the way I read this, you still need to have Polymorph prepared, but I'm not certain on that, so don't take my word on that, but it sounds to me like you would still need Polymorph prepared. I would still prepare it anyways, because when I do cast Polymorph, I'm going to cast it the old way to buff my allies. Uh, and this ability, I'm only really going to be using for utility. Turning into a challenge rating one beast or less is not something you want to be doing in combat. What we're going to be using this ability for is utility. You need to fly, you can turn into a bird. You need to swim, you can turn into a fish. Uh, you need to climb, you can turn into a monkey. So you can turn into things that are going to have value from a utility standpoint, but in combat, if you're going to use Polymorph, you're going to use your regular spell slot and use it the regular way. Also keep in mind, Shape Changer is not Wild Shape. You're not keeping your mental ability scores. You're not keeping your class abilities. We are going to get another cantrip at this level. I think this is a good place to add Prestidigitation, uh, just to round out what we can do with magical cantrips. We're not going to see a lot of cantrips at this level that are going to make a big difference to the character. Uh, then we're going to go to our fifth level spells and we're going to select two new spells. Now because of preparations, I'm going to want another ritual, so I'm going to go back to third level spells and pick up water breathing. There's not a lot of great fourth level or fifth level rituals, except for Rary's Telepathic Bond, which I already have, but fortunately there are lots of good third level rituals. Water breathing is a great ritual that can give your entire party water breathing for free without using a spell slot for 24 hours a day. And the fifth level spell I'm going to take is Telekinesis. I think this is really good for, again, this style of wizard, a pacifist wizard. Uh, because often we're going to be wondering what to be doing with our actions once we cast our big gun spell. But the Telekinesis includes that. So we're going to cast Telekinesis, and then we're going to be using our action to use that Telekinesis each round. Uh, whether we're using it to restrain a creature or move an object, uh, then Telekinesis is always going to have something we can do with it 
each round that we're using it. Uh, in addition, there's utility uses. You can do things like have a surface that all the players stand on, and then you could potentially float it around to give everyone kind of a limited form of flight, that kind of thing. Uh, but telekinesis is a good combat spell that doesn't do damage uh, that this character can take a lot of use out of. So just to go over quickly, our preparation list for level 10. Uh, so we've got our cantrips prepared, we've got Absorb Elements, Mage Armor, Shield, and Silent Image prepared as our first level spells, Levitate, Misty Step, and Web as our second level spells, Counterspell in a Hypnotic Pattern as our third level spells, Polymorph and Watery Sphere as our fourth level spells. Polymorph is starting to become a little less valuable here. At some point, we might not want to prepare it anymore. Then again, the transmuter has an additional utility use for polymorph and they can cast it more often. So we might still want to keep it prepared just for that. Uh, and then at fifth level, telekinesis and wall of force prepared. So that's the transmuter to level 10. Uh, if you want to join me for the next video, we'll talk about levels 11 through 20. So hope to see you there.